So there's a lot of opinions on when you should start using past papers to practice for your exams. And one very popular idea that I came across often on sites like um, IB Survival, Reddit, and other IB forums is that if you do past papers too early, you waste them. And essentially it's this idea that if you do past papers too early, you use them up because you'll know how to solve them when you attempt them in the future. And I bought into this idea for some time in IB1, so I'd purposely not practice past paper questions to save them for later closer to the exam. But looking at things a bit more clearly now, it kind of makes sense that, yeah, you shouldn't use past papers too early, but that doesn't mean you wait for yourself to finish the whole syllabus before you start them. Think about it. Really, there are two things that you're trying to accomplish with past papers. First, you want to test what level you are currently in the subject, right? Are you a 5 out of 7? Are you a 6 out of 7? Are you 7? What level are you? And also, you want to learn and improve from the marking scheme. But if you did pass papers too early, you're not really accomplishing any of this. So let's say in Math SL, there's six major chapters that you covered throughout IB. Now imagine that you've only learned the first two chapters, your class has only done two chapters, but your teacher tests you on all six chapters. Now is that fair? No, in fact, you're probably going to fail that test, not because you're dumb or you don't understand anything, but you literally haven't learned the other four chapters. If you had learned the other chapters and you failed, yeah, it's different, right? You're in a bad situation. But your teacher didn't say that you had to study the other chapters. That's why you failed. You never attempted them. We know it's an unfair test. And it's the same with past papers. If you attempt them too early, if you attempt them before you've learned the material fully, you aren't testing how good you are accurately. It's an unfair test test. What about the second point, learning from past papers? Well, you learn when you check your answers against the marking scheme, right? So you look back at the MS, understand what you did wrong, and then you improve next time. But here's the thing. The marking scheme shows you how to solve a problem, but it doesn't tell you why that's right. So suppose you get an economics question like, why do firms wish to collude? And you have no idea how to answer this. So you look at the MS and it says, informal collusion, price leadership. And you just kind of stare at that and you think to yourself, what the hell does that mean? You see, if you don't understand the theory or the logic behind the MS, you won't benefit from it. And the MS doesn't include paragraphs explaining the logic behind a point. You get that from prior learning from your textbook, from the YouTube videos. And if you don't understand the logic, you can't improve and there's really no point. So hopefully you kind of see that if you do these questions too early, you're not getting either benefit from past papers and there's really not much use in doing them. So when should you attempt past papers? Well, I like to think about it like this. Each subject is divided into major topics. So math SL has six, bio has 11, economics has four, and past paper questions can be filtered according to these major topics. So most questions test you on just one of these major topics. So what you need to do is the moment you're done with a major topic, right? The moment you're confident with a major topic, like the moment you're confident with algebra, the moment you're confident with functions, directly start doing past paper questions only on that topic. So if you're done with chapter one in the second month of the first term of IB, directly start doing past paper questions on chapter one. And when you're done with chapter one and two, start doing chapter one and two questions. You're not wasting papers this way because A, you're being tested accurately. You've learned all you need to learn off a particular topic. It's not like when you study chapter four, suddenly you're getting epiphanies and realizations on chapter one. Sure, there are some parts of the syllabus that overlap and maybe some questions that use both chapters. Uh, but for the most part, if you're done with a topic and you aren't directly learning any new information, you're testing yourself accurately. And B, also at this point, you've already got enough of the topic, so you'll understand the logic behind the marking scheme. So even if you make mistakes, you understand the logic behind the right answer, and you'll know how to improve. So you'll understand why the MS answers a question in a certain way, and you'll understand the why and not just the how. You know, people get scared that if they do a past paper in the future, they will already know the answers to it. So they can't use that past paper again because they'll remember the answer, right? It's like cheating or something. And to these people, I ask the question, have you ever learned a topic for an exam? You knew it perfectly. And then six months later, when you're being tested on it again, 
you realize that you remember less than 20% of it. And most of the time, people say, including me, yes. You see, we forget what we learn and eventually you're going to forget how you did this past paper. I would do a past paper question perfectly and then five months later, I wouldn't know how to do it again. So don't worry about running out of past papers because you're going to forget them. In fact, a bit of forgetting is good. There's this thing called the spacing effect, which basically states that learning something, letting time pass while forgetting it, and then learning it again later helps to strengthen the material you learn. And I got this from the Thomas Frank video, so if you're interested in the science, look at the MLA link in the description. So doing past papers, forgetting them, and then doing them later again may actually help you get that marking scheme in your head. And you know, regardless of the science, which I didn't know any of right when I was in the IB, it's just, it's just a general fact that the questions that you do the most, the questions that I read the most, are the ones that stuck with me for the exam. So don't be afraid of doing past paper questions and then redoing them later on. People get scared that you'll memorize the marking scheme so you can't test yourself in the future. And then I say, is it so bad to memorize the marking scheme and know exactly how to solve every IB question for the past eight years? Half the questions repeat in IB papers, especially subjects like bio, math, econ. So if you remember how to do a question from a previous past paper, I mean, isn't that good? So what if you remember all the Mars schemes? Yeah, maybe doing that mad past paper question six times throughout IB has got it stuck in your head. Oh, the horror. But with that info, any similar question that pops into your exam, as long as you understand the logic behind the marking scheme, you'll be able to apply what you remember from those similar questions, and that will definitely raise your IB score. So with this statement, if you do past papers too early, you waste them. Yeah, it's true, you shouldn't try a full past paper before you've completed the syllabus, because that's not gonna benefit you. But for the majority of us, doing past paper questions by topic directly when a major topic is done is going to bring in a lot of benefit. And those past paper questions that get stuck in your head because you've done them so many times, that's going to be extremely valuable to you during your final exam. So hopefully that cleared up a little bit about past papers. If you have any questions at all, any feedback, email me, post in the comments, DM me on Insta. I roughly need another 10 and a half million followers to beat Colts Pro, so high hopes. At IBLyCo. Again, hope it goes well, hope it all works out. Take care.